go. How do you encourage people to have the bravery to do that? Because I think a lot of people will mm. say to me, oh, hell no, I'm not going to therapy, like friends of mine yep. or whatever. Or like if I give a presentation and do a public speaking event, um, you know, people might come up to me afterwards and they might say something that I'm like, therapy might be good for you, but um, yeah. you, and you can kind of tell sometimes from people where they're like, I don't, that therapy's not for me. Like, I will not do that because I don't want to explore myself. I don't want to be alone with myself. I don't want to think like, and that's why I think um, quarantine and isolation and everything happening right now is so confronting for so many people because they Massive. are forced with their own thoughts. They are alone with themselves for way longer than they would like. They can't go to the pub, go out to eat, distract themselves with friends, booze. I mean, you can still booze at home and stuff, but like, it's different. You can't mm -hmm. just numb and avoid time with myself like I could pre-isolation. So what would you say to the person? Because I, I can hear some of my clients saying, yeah. I don't want to spend time alone with myself, you crazies. Like, that's ridiculous, especially childhood <laughs> trauma people, because they'll say, um, and I don't, they, we all have mm -hmm. trauma. Um, we would all say like, I don't want to go there. I've actually have so many people say to me through the years, um, why would I want to open that can of worms? It's fine. I'm fine. My life is fine. If I mm. do what you're saying, which is spend time with myself to reflect and how do I feel about trees? That's going to remind me of the time I was chained to a tree. That's going to remind me of the time yeah. that, you know, so how do we encourage, and it's easy, I think once you've done it and you've either done mm -hmm. therapy or self-exploration, personal development, and you've come across to go, whoa, it's so much better on the side, mm. easy for us to say. But how do we sell it? How do we say to someone who's here and saying it's so much, it's so much better over here, I promise you, just trust me, trust me. How do you sell that to someone? Why? Why should I you know, spend more time with myself and reflect on going for a walk without my phone. Why, why should I do that? Yeah. And, and that's, that's the fundamental question in, in life, you know, why? Um, and what helped me was um, studying neuroscience and, and I don't talk about neuroscience to my clients or anything, but um, to, to, when you're trying to motivate yourself or motivate someone, what really helped me was to know how human behavior is motivated and it's, it's motivated between two frames, getting away from pain and running toward pleasure. And they've studied that in rats, you know, and um, it's inherent to the human animal. So the question why to help someone explore themselves, which is really scary. Um, there has to be a reason like why do anything other than that, you know? So when someone says to me, cause it comes up in my practice all the time as well. It's like, well, I don't really want to do that. Now a lot of the work I do is around journaling and stuff like that. You know, um, so it's like, well, I don't really want to go down that path. They may not even say that. I think your point's really good. They might just say, oh, I'm, it's all, I'm all good. And then like on the other side, you can be like, you can see the addiction, you can see the depression, you can see the distractions like, well, and we're all a work in progress. That's for sure. But like that person, everyone needs some kind of self-development mechanism. I really believe that because none of us are perfect and we never will be, but we can be better than we, who we were yesterday. Yeah. Um, so when you're talking about why pain and pleasure, this is something that I really love and I really use it. It's very confronting to, um, and this is why you have to know your client as well, but it's very confronting for someone to, have a think about um, what's the best way to say this, why it's so necessary. They do the work, you know, who do you have any idea where this car is headed? If you don't do that work, that's the pain I'm talking about. So it's like, do you know how bad your life could be in two, three, four years time? If you don't start now, that's confronting for someone, but that is motivative. Like fear is very, very motivational, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I am being chased by a lion, um, I will run faster than I ever have in my whole life. Fear is very motivational. So to give someone kind of like a, 
uh, a very realistic future of who they could be if they don't do the work. That is very motivational. I'm not saying that's probably the best way to go about it in the beginning. Mm. Um, and I think fear is actually more motivated than, than pleasure, but I'm not or desire, but I'm not too sure. But yeah. the other side of that coin is 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 pleasure. Imagine who you could be if you did do the work, and then uh, and then having a think and unpacking that. You know, this is like getting to the the root of someone's why. What could your relationship be like? You know, if you did just start to save $10, look how much money you have in five years time. Not, I'm not even including the compound interest, mm -hmm. you know, like having to think about who they could be if they started doing the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's very subjective and people respond. I've had clients that love the fear. They just want to jump into the pain. Oh my God, I can't believe I'll be like that in five years time. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. And that works really well for them, you know? Mm -hmm for some kind of bizarre reason, you know, the irony potentially being childhood experience, fear works best for them. <laughs> but fear and, 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 and pleasure, pain and pleasure, um, I think are really good. And if you can apply them to someone's life to motivate them or, and just to motivate yourself to do things. Mm -hmm. I hate um, saving and, you know, I hate eating healthily. I really hate eating healthily, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I really try to make sure that I'm aware of um, how important it is for me, given that I've had is issues with allergies and asthma in the past and things. And I don't want to go down that road again. So I, I try to get all the good foods in. Mm -hmm. And that's then your motivation is the pain that could happen if I don't engage in this pathway. 